I'm 2015. Yeah. I'm feeling it. My name is Anthony Agnello. That's a normal voice to use. That's how a normal person talks. A normal American a human. Normal I American. Like it. Maxwell that, McGee here. That's Maxwell McGee, and yeah, this buddy. is Paul Cornell. Hello. <laughs> You were supposed to sing your intro. Oh, we got to do this again. We blew it. We blew the whole thing. Paul Cornell is a writer of many things, TV, <laughs> novels, comic books, all this stuff. And you're working on Doctor Who. You've got a novel called Shadow Police. You're working on a really freaking cool sounding 70s horror <laughs> rock and roll comic called This Damned Band. Dude, how the hell do you fit all that in? Well, I've, I've got a small child as well. I have no idea. What did I do with all that free time before he was born? It's extraordinary. I, 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 you just got to just put him to work. Make him work on it. <laughs> well, yeah, he's lettering for me now. Oh, so, so yeah. there you go. There yeah. you go. Paul, actually, like, seriously, th this is a legit question about the discipline of writing. I wake up in the morning, and somebody says, oh, you need to write 200 words. That's it. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. 200 words. 200 oh words. That's so many. It's like three <laughs> sentences. I'll write 100 <laughs> now. Go down to Starbucks, maybe get a sandwich. We'll see about we'll the see other how 100. It goes. I'm not making any promises. How do you keep it clear, man? How do you make sure that you can be able to switch from a novel to a comic to TV on the fly? Well, you just have different bits of your brain that do different things. And I just divide up everything I have to do and do a portion of it every day. Yeah. And um, sheer panic about having to you know, spend lots of time on childcare. Yeah. And uh, also, we'll all be dead one day. <laughs> you know, you might as well live. You might as well do the work. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. I love that feeling. You're part of Doctor Who went in the past 10 years from being a memory, a thing. It was like an off gag on The Simpsons. Somebody mm -hmm. would come out in a long scarf and they'd be like, oh, yes, that delightful thing that I would see on PBS. Now... The BBC shows are everywhere. How did Doctor Who come back this strong? And why is everybody watching BBC shows now? <laughs> They've got a booth. They've got a booth right They've down the way. A big there. BBC booth, yeah. Uh, Russell T. Davis whispered some magic words. It was like Wanda Maximoff going, no more mutants. <laughs> he said, Doctor Who will be big again. And it was. And, did uh, you meet like in a smoky room? <laughs> some like underground bunker? And he's like, come here. I have something to say. But no, I agree. It's an amazing change in the world, isn't it? Yeah. It's extraordinary because it was a show that was basically spat upon and marginal and tiny yeah. before it left. And in those 15 years between the old show and the new, I think people took it away and worked on it and yeah. had an idea of what it should be when it came back. And Russell, just this fabulous, and now Stephen, just these fabulous central urges as to what it should be. And it's conquered the world in the last two years, conquered the States as well. Yeah. Honestly, there, there are now tribes in Papua New Guinea who have scarves and <laughs> At the bow annual ties. potlatch, <laughs> yeah. it's now like sit there and be like, who is your favorite doctor? <laughs> there, there, there's going to be war in Europe over this at some point. You know, who is, <laughs> the, the French rather like trout, mm, but it's more Sylvester McCoy for the Germans and this will become a big thing. Yeah. So Doctor Who's kind of exploded out across like comics, TV, mm. books. Like as a writer, how do you sort of maintain like a consistent like tone across well, all these different It's meetings. really interesting. For the Titan comics, we've got really good interaction with the production office. So mm. we've got genuine notes from the producers as to tone. But I think knowing the tone of your favorite doctors right. is sort of what Doctor Who fans <laughs> do from birth. You know, we, we, we know, we know how these- trained from the very beginning. Yeah, we know how these guys talk, you know, that's the thing. And on Four Doctors, this crossover I'm doing, we've got um, uh, the ninth, 10th and 11th doctors all interacting all the time. So um, basically the earlier two, um, nine, I just thought, well, um, sorry, <laughs> no, 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 the 10th, 11th, and 12th Doctors. I don't blame you. I yeah. don't blame you. Oh, blame well, nine, I'm done now. 11, I'm done. The, 10th, I mean, the, the, uh, the fandom uh, will just have a go This is what one there. of the core writers deals <laughs> with when Do you trying have to, to actually just approach in your own, Just like, <laughs> ah, yes. This is I, I won't make it out of this booth alive now. There'll be Doctor Who <laughs> fans waiting down there. Oh, okay. But um, no, the um, uh, 12th Doctor obviously doesn't want to explain to the earlier two how right. he can be there. Yeah. And the 10th thinks this is really dodgy and something really <laughs> bad's gone on. So those two are at each other's throats with the 11th in the middle going, can't we all just get along? <laughs> and having interaction between all those forms of speech, right. that's such a dream come true. I'm so <laughs> enjoying it. Paul, with, so John Constantine is now like, for some reason he's a teen sex idol, <laughs> which means that there is now a void in the world of filthy, punk rock, dingy British horror comics. 
and you're filling this void. You're filling this void. That's a really good comparison. Thank you. I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just stop, and you're yeah. like, your response? Yeah. It's but the long lead, baby. <laughs> so like this damned band for Dark Horse Comics, How? tell us about it. Tell well, us about this act. It, it's about a uh, the biggest band, rock band of 1974 um, who liked to say, in a very pretentious British way, we worship the devil. Um, only to find to their horror and surprise that they're actually worshipping the devil. And it's a Ghostbuster-style horror comedy, and uh, told to camera, uh, like this is a documentary, like The Office. Um, and um, Tony Parker is drawing the hell out of it. it we're <laughs> like, we like to think it's scary and funny in equal measure. And it's based on that wonderful idea of people pretentiously saying something without any thought in their head that it might actually be true. Right. <laughs> Um, everybody, this is Paul Cornell. He writes everything under the sun. <laughs> Can you read this damn band now? Is it out? It's out um, early August, but we're after pre-orders right now because pre-orders make our lives in comics. Right. Early August. Read it then. Paul, thank you so much thank for coming by. Thank you so man. much. <laughs> thank you. Take care, Paul. Hurrah!